It's the Spooky Show with Willie. <laughs> Greetings, ghouls, and welcome to the Spooky Show. I'm your hairy host, Willie Muse, coming to you from the Void of Unimaginable Horrors. And if you know me, you know that I have an unhealthy obsession with dogs. Like, seriously, it's debilitating. Like, actually, before we go on, do you guys want to see a picture of my dog real quick? She's really cute. <gasps> yeah, there she is. <gasps> oh, you're Lily. You're so cute. <gasps> oh. Being in this void, I miss her every day. Any hoozle. Because of my love for dogs and my love for monsters, it's no surprise that I have a deep passion for the family dog of all monsters, the werewolf. Wolves are, after all, basically just dogs, you know, if dogs lived in the wild and hunted in packs. And would probably kill me if given the slightest opportunity. That said, though I'm not complaining, I've often wondered why wolves are the animal that people transform into when they become monsters. I mean, they're cool and all, but like, why not wear bears or wear octopuses or, I don't know, wear dinosaurs? There are a lot of animals to choose from, so how the farts did the paranoid villager who invented them decide that the thing that they were chasing with torches was a wolf? It's perplexing to say the least, and this of course brings me to my question of the day, which is why are werewolves wolves? Guys, I think this is going to be a fun one, because after some digging, I've come to find that the history of werewolves is as dark and twisted as this mustache on my face. And just like this mustache on my face, it is also very real. <laughs> Before we can answer this question, we should probably establish what exactly we mean when we say werewolf for, I don't know, I guess the aliens who are watching this right now. Uh, derived from the old English words ver, meaning man, and wolf, meaning wolf, uh, a werewolf is, well, just that. It's a wolf man. Um, during the day, they're totally normal, totally unremarkable human beings, but by night, usually by the light of a full moon, they're said to transform into horrible, rampaging beasts who commit all sorts of heinous crimes. And just like other criminals, they were often put to trial. Seriously. If you're a frequent viewer of this show, it should come as no surprise to you that people back in the day thought that werewolves were a very real threat and did their best to root them out in society. If you're not a frequent viewer of this show, well, go fuck yourself, you bag of dicks. Sorry, I don't know what came over me. Anyway, werewolf trials occurred in European countries like Estonia, Lithuania, and the Netherlands, lasting from the 16th to the 18th century, which is a long-ass time. Um, to give you a sense of what these things were like, I'm going to tell you the story of the adorable-sounding Hans the Werewolf. And spoiler alert, the story isn't actually adorable. Though Hans the Werewolf sounds like the name of a fairy tale, it's actually the sad tale of a young Eastern European boy who suffered a gruesome, untimely death. Uh, in 1651, an 18-year-old boy named Hans was brought in front of a court in Estonia on charges of being a werewolf. And then that 18-year-old boy named Hans admitted to being a werewolf and was quickly put to death in what I can only imagine was a very unpleasant manner. Uh, besides his own ambition of guilt, there was no actual proof of him doing anything wolf-like, but that said, the story he told the courts was so taboo for the time that he might as well have just gone in front of a jury and said, kill me Christians, in whatever language they speak in Estonia. Estonian, probably. According to Hans, his life as a wolf started when he was bitten in the leg by a mysterious man in black, who turned out to be a less than savory character. Once bitten, Hans discovered that the man was a werewolf who had spread the curse to the young man, who was then forced to spend the next two years of his life hunting by night, which was probably Estonian code for eating babies or something terrible like that. When asked, Hans told the judge that he felt more like a wild beast than a man, and it didn't take long before that kooky teen was sentenced to burn in hell for all eternity. 
Like I said, Hans probably didn't actually do anything terribly sinister, but that said, for him to have confessed to the point of being executed means that something was probably up. If you call yourself a werewolf, it means one of two things. Either there's something wrong with you, or you're trying to sell a reality show. And I'm going to go out on a limb and saying that our Estonian friend wasn't trying to be the next Kim Kardashian. It wasn't just Hans either. Unlike with other trials we've talked about here, just about every historical account I've read of someone being convicted of lycanthropy did make it sound like there was something legitimately wrong with the person in question. And since it's unlikely that they were actually transforming into a wolf by the light of a full moon, you gotta wonder what that was. I forget what you call those nerds who say things, but they actually have a lot of theories about what might have created belief in the werewolf back in the day. There are too many of these to go over all of them now, so I'll just touch on my favorite explanations, starting with something horrible that I'm sure you've all heard of before. Rabies! I don't know why I said that so excitedly, I'm sorry. If you think about it, rabies does share a lot in common with werewolfism. Um, in both cases, it starts with someone getting bitten and ends with someone transforming into a violent, snarling beast. <laughs> rabies could very likely be transferred to a human by a wolf, and it could make a human do a lot of the horrific things that werewolves were wont to do. If you didn't know any better, someone with rabies would look as though they've suddenly transformed into an inhuman monster. Although, that said, not everyone needs a virus attacking their brains in order to become an inhuman monster. Another explanation for werewolves is that they were something very real that still scares us even to this very day. Serial killers. Uh, the theory behind this one is that people told stories of mythical beasts to make sense of the fact that real life monsters were lurking in their myths because honestly some crimes are so heinous and bestial that it's easier to believe that a wolf did it than someone who looks human like you and me. Uh, though this probably doesn't explain away all cases of werewolves, there was at least one confirmed instance where this was actually what was going on. Peter Stump was a 16th century German farmer who confessed to killing and eating 14 children. Uh, according to Stump, he made a deal with the devil and was given a magical girdle which allowed him to transform into a wolf and facilitated his crimes. He did a lot of fucked up shit, and for his crimes he was dubbed the Werewolf of Bedburg, and he was also tortured and killed in a manner that involved having his flesh ripped from his body by a wheel and having his limbs broken with the handle of an axe. He was then beheaded with that axe and thrown into a fire, and in most cases I would say that this was literal overkill, but like I said, that dude killed 14 kids, and one of those kids was his own son, and he ate his son's brain, so honestly, fuck that guy. Of course, serial killers like Stump are few and far between, so there likely had to be a more common reason to explain cases of lycanthropy. And surprisingly, one of the most common explanations I came across involved rye bread, of all things. What's even more surprising is that even though I'm about to talk about rye bread and 16th century Christians, very little of what I'm about to say has anything to do with anti-Semitism. Back in the day, Bread was a staple of a lot of people's diets, and though it was full of carby goodness, it also had some dangers associated with it. Uh, grains like wheat and rye were susceptible to contamination from a fungus called ergot, and ergot is... Well, let's just say it's all sorts of fun. When consumed, ergot is akin to taking LSD, only instead of making people write Sgt. Peppers, it caused whole towns to completely lose their shit. Uh, someone under the effects of ergot poisoning would do such wolfy things as shaking, convulsing, and even eating voracious amounts of food. And if that weren't bad enough, what makes ergot worse is the fact that outbreaks often infected lots of people at once. So not only would it mess with one person's mind and make them act like a wolf, it could also affect all the people around that person and make them think that they'd seen a werewolf. All of these explanations I just gave are pretty different, but they all have one thing in common, and that is this. 
In all of these cases, seemingly normal people are afflicted by something that makes them act in a way that would be considered closer to animal than man. And this is where we get back to my question of the day. The short answer to why werewolves are wolves is that wolves are a symbol for the wild. The long answer is a little more complicated than that. The truth is that back in the day, wolves weren't any more wild than humans, or at least humans weren't any more civilized than wolves. Uh, we used to hunt side by side and work towards the same goal of like killing caribou or something, and it wasn't until the advent of agriculture that our paths split. We stopped hunting and started keeping our meat in fences, and wolves were forced to look at our tasty cows from the woods as their mouths watered. Uh, when they decided to start hunting our livestock, they became the enemy, and that was basically where the line between civilized and wild was drawn. This is all to say that wolves represent more than just something wild. They represent who we once were, and by extension, they represent who we might one day become. Whether it's because of outside chemicals, faulty wiring, or just good old-fashioned infectious diseases, there are all sorts of ways that the human brain can stop acting, well, human. Um, as evolved as we like to see ourselves, the truth is that every one of us is capable of crossing whatever thin line separates man from beast, and when that happens, it's usually out of our control, and it usually has horrible consequences. Stories of werewolves remind us that deep within all of us lurks an animal, and even if that animal never gets the chance to howl at the moon, it's still scary knowing that it's there. We could all be just one bite in the leg or bad slice of rye away from becoming the kind of monster we fear the most, and if you ask me, that's pretty spooky. Ow! That's it for me, guys, but before I go, let me just say that werewolves are a lot more complicated than I was expecting. So if you want to howl at me for something I missed, please do so below in the comments. Um, also, please like, subscribe, share, comment, shave my face into the side of your head, anything you can do to help me grow. Um, I'll just say spread the spook today because I want to keep this outro short. Because I want to get out of here before I... <coughs> before I... Oh God, oh no, it's happening, it's happening. <laughs> I'm changing. <laughs> Whatever, screw you guys. See you later, ghouls, episode over.